This is um, my recipe for a black forest trifle. Right, um, black forest gatto or Schwarzwalder Torte was very, very popular as a German black forest cake in the 80s and 90s. It was kind of ubiquitous. It was everywhere you looked on every menu. And from that developed the black forest trifle. Now I thought I was the first one that had ever done this and then I looked online and seen that lots of people have done it as well so I can't claim total originality but this is my recipe for it and none of the other recipes I've seen seem to follow my English trifle kind of vein of doing this. So uh, without any further ado let's just go through the ingredients. Well we're starting with just some of those sponge fingers, the, the, the type that we, we put in the bottom of our trifles and uh, we'll also need some je jelly made from black cherries so you'll need some pitted black cherries or morello cherries as they're often called you'll need some gelatine because we're going to make that into jelly and you'll need sufficient gelatine for half a pint or that's um, half a pint in American measures is t is five fluid ounces sorry is ten fluid ounces half a pint is ten fluid ounces a British pint is 20 fluid ounces not 16 like a US pint you'll also need I've got a couple of pints of milk we're going to need uh, milk for the chocolate pudding and we're going to need milk for the white chocolate pudding so this is layered, so you've got a jelly on the bottom, you've got a chocolate pudding above that and then you've got a white chocolate pudding on top and then we top it off with a garnish of, um, I'm garnishing it with some really high cocoa Swiss dark chocolate, some Chantilly cream which I'll show you how to make, um, some of these lovely little brownies and some more cherries which I'll, I'll Bob on top of blobs of the cream uh, and to that end I'll need a piping bag which I've got already there with a, a, a pipe uh, piping nozzle on the end of it. Uh, the other thing we'll need is some a little bit of icing sugar for the Chantilly cream and we'll need some caster sugar or fine sugar. The other addition we'll need is some cocoa powder to make the uh, milk chocolate pudding. Right, without further ado, I think I'll get on and make the jelly, which goes in the bottom of the trifle. The first thing I want to do is get about a quarter of a pint of hot water, because I'm going to make up this gelatine according to the instructions on the packet. So you can use gelatine powder, you can use agar agar, you can use whatever it is you like as a gelling agent, and but just m enough to make up a half a pint. And that should suffice. This one I just need to dissolve the gelatine in water and I'll stir that well in make sure it's all dissolved. I always find that sheet gelatin although it's probably the best to use I find it really difficult to um, get it all stirred in and dissolved because it's uh, but you can get those little um, sachets of powder of either vegetarian or gelatin. I'm going to add two teaspoons, not too much. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, if you want it super sweet, then do. But the, the point of this particular jelly adds a little sour note, so we don't want it too sweet. We don't want it cloyingly sweet. So. That's just two teaspoons of sugar, so it's about the strength of a sweet tea. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to line the bottom. Let's get this out of the way now. 
I'm just going to line the bottom of my trifle bowl with some of these sponge fingers. I have absolutely no sweet tooth at all, but my brother is chomping on the bit about this dessert because he, he loves chocolate and he loves sweet things. King Pud, I call him. Because he loves any pud. And I think this qualifies. So, just enough to line the bottom of whatever bowl you're using. Or just break them up and push them into the corners. And then, I want to get the juice of that into the... Or, make it up to at least half a pint. That's about right anyway. So that'll do. And then what I can do is I can put all the cherries on top. Stir that to mix. And pour it over the sponge. Yes, I know. Soggy sponge. Trust me, it works. This is how an English trifle is made. We normally do it with um, a strawberry jelly topped with custard and then topped with cream and that's a standard English trifle. So we can now leave that, I'm just going to push that those two bits down because they, they do swell up and they will force themselves up and out. So now we need to leave that to set so I'm going to put that in my fridge and just let it set. Okay the next thing we need to make is the chocolate pudding. So we need to do that over the stove. Okay, so the recipe I'm going to use for this is the Emma's chocolate pudding recipe, which I did a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just going to use half of that recipe for this particular trifle. I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of sugar. And the recipe is in the description below the video so you don't need to be writing it down a quarter cup of sugar a quarter cup of cocoa powder and about an eighth of a cup of cornstarch it's about a tablespoon that is something like that and I'll give that a mix before I start adding any milk heat under it and then I want to add gradually add two cups of milk to that and I've got it on the heat now so I just want to add it in gradually so that it doesn't form lumps we don't want lumps lumps is not good I always love the way that cocoa just floats on top and it gives that sort of matte chocolate coloured appearance. So second cup. And whisking as you go helps to mix it in nicely. So now what I have to do is just keep mixing and stirring until that begins to thicken. Okay, as it comes up to heat, it's going to start to thicken, so you've got to keep it stirring, otherwise, you'll end up with just a big lumpy mass. So let it stir, and once it starts to boil, take it down. Take the heat right down and cook it over a low heat for about half a minute. If you like more sugar in your recipes, use a little more by all means, but this is beautifully balanced. You can taste the chocolate. You can taste the cherries. It doesn't all taste of sugar. And it's still nice and sweet. So don't be tempted to over sugar it. 
does you no good. So after a few seconds, about 30 seconds or so, you can put it to one side. And what I like to do at this stage is I like to give it another good whisk. There's something about chocolate when it's whisked. It really does love it. Turn that off and into that I'm just going to put a couple of drops of vanilla. How much? I don't know. Uh, this is a highly concentrated one so it depends on the vanilla you use. So just a modest amount of vanilla. We want it to taste of chocolate not vanilla. We just want the vanilla there to give the chocolate a little boost. I'll put that to one side and while it's still hot I'm just going to add about a dessert spoonful of butter and stir that in. On its own that is a fantastic chocolate pudding. It is wonderful and it's my friend Emma's recipe from uh, Nova Scotia. Thanks Emma. Right, I'm going to put that to one side and allow it to cool because we've got to let the, the trifle set before we add that to it. And we don't want to add that while it's too hot. So we'll put that to one side and allow that to cool. Now we're going to get on with the white chocolate pudding. Okay, for the white chocolate pudding, I'm going to put one cup of milk into the into a large saucepan and I'm going to break up 150 grams bar of chocolate, white chocolate, because this is all about white chocolate this one. I'm just going to break that up and drop it all in. And over low heat, we just stir to dissolve that. Just let that go over low heat. So into a little mixing cup, I'm going to add about an eighth of a cup of corn starch corn flour. And then I'm going to gradually mix in until that's a, a full cup full some milk, just stir it in and let it dissolve. Once your corn flour is fully dissolved you can top it up to the full cup. So altogether that's two cups of milk and a bar of white chocolate. And we can begin now to add that to our saucepan. And then we keep continuing to stir and to bring that up until it starts to thicken, just as before. Okay, just like with the milk chocolate pudding, it's coming up to the boil. And I'm just going to keep it moving, stirring it for about another half minute. I can turn off the heat and cook it in the retiring heat. If you're on gas, just turn it real low for a minute. Okay, once you've let it go for about half a minute, bring it off the heat. And you can add a couple of drops of vanilla again not to overpower the chocolate although you can put a little bit more vanilla in with um, white chocolate it seems to like it and again just stir in a generous blob of butter give it a nice whisk and then set it aside and then we need to check the jelly's done 
Okay, so I've emptied my 300ml of heavy cream, uh, which is we call double cream or whipping cream, into a suitable bowl. I don't know if you've ever made Chantilly cream before, but it's so simple. You just need to add about a teaspoon of, uh, this is icing sugar, and the reason we do that is because it blends in nicer. And you want a fairly generous amount of vanilla in there. So I use a fairly concentrated form of vanilla. So I can't really say how much you should use, but um, just go by taste, you'll know. You can always taste as you go. And then I'm going to go at that with my food mixer. And as you can see, I whip that st stiff until it starts to turn the bowl. And once I've done that, I'm just going to uh, chill that in the fridge, covered, until I'm ready to pipe it. So, our uh, cherry jelly set. And these two chocolate sauces, chocolate um, puddings are cooled down sufficiently to carry on. So before I do, I'll just give them a quick whip. And then what I do is I carefully spoon that on top of this one. Carefully. It's still slightly warm, but making sure it's all evenly spread out over the, the jelly. And then the next thing I need to do is sort of smooth that out a little bit. So I'm going in with my lovely smoothing spatula. And I find it easy to hold the spatula in place and just spin the bowl like this. Look. It really does a neat job. I got the idea of using this spatula from... Um, my dear friend Fiona from Gracious Tweets. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Fiona's videos of her beautiful, beautiful cakes. But if you haven't and you like cake and you like cake making, you need to get over there and check her out because she's amazing. Really, truly amazing. And she's a, a graphic designer by profession. So her videos have got that really beautiful, you know, pictorial beauty about them as well, which is a major part of uh, doing videos, I think. Right, um, so, n under normal circumstances, I would say put that in the fridge and let that chill for another hour. But um, I'm going to have to fast forward now because I'm running out of time at this end. I'm going to whip up my chocolate sauce and that's my white chocolate sauce and, and I'm going to pour the white chocolate sauce very carefully on top of the milk chocolate sauce. There we go. Put that out of the way. And again with the spatula I like to smooth that off. It's a really good design, step spatula. I really do like it. It's a, a very handy tool for things like this. And also for things like cake icing and that. I just like to go around the rim, clean off any splashes I've got before I continue. And there we go. Okay, right. The next thing I want to do is get some grated dark chocolate on top of that. So we've got three types of chocolate. We've got milk chocolate, white chocolate, and dark chocolate. And this is a particularly high cocoa one at 85%. Uh, so it's nice and sharp, kind of bitter, which adds a nice contrast to the smoothness and sweetness of everything else in this. 
So I'm going to start with those two bits first. I've taken it out of the fridge to make it easy to grate. And I'm just going to grate it on top of there. You don't need too much, but just enough to cover it. Like, freckle it like that. Okay, I'm quite happy with that, the way that looks. Right. So, let's just clean off the edges there. And then I'm just going to get some my Chantilly cream. Okay. Technique with the Chantilly cream is I can open it up like that. Or another technique is to put it over a glass. Poke it all in like that. And get the cream into it so and you can see it going down the side you can also do this with them just the corner of a plastic bag and then we go into there I'm not very good at this my friend Fiona is probably laughing at me now because she's really expert at this Not my greatest work of art ever, but I think you know where I'm going with it. So we'll start with a cherry in the middle. I'll put a cherry on each of these. It's a real classic combination. You've got the um, you've got sweet, you've got sour. Whoops. And you've got creamy and you've got chocolatey and sweet. I've said sweet. So we'll put that there like that as the last one and then I'm just going to dress it up with a little bit uh, with some of these brownies. And doesn't that look gorgeous? So there we have it, Black Forest Trifle. So I'll just go uh, over it from the bottom upwards. It has a black cherry jelly with sponge fingers immersed in the jelly. And on that is a milk chocolate pudding. And on top of that is a white chocolate pudding. And the whole thing is bedecked with Chantilly cream, Chocky brownies uh, bites and Morello cherries. Enjoy. Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications for all my future videos. It would be great to hear from you in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. You may wish to check out these titles or even help me out with a donation using the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.